I talk in my book about Just Mary of my parents' mixed political backgrounds. Not many people know that, eh, except when I put it in my book. My father was from Kilfenora in County Clare, where his father was of the very, eh, a great follower of the old Irish party, and in time a follower of Michael Collins. And my father, as a young boy, imbued that from him. And indeed, my cousin is here today, Dr. Dudley Edwards, through my father's mother, late lamented and early lamented. But um, the, he, he was imbued with that kind of politics. He went off to UCG, University College of Galway, where he met my mother. And she was Annie Scanlon from Drumcliff County, Sligo. Now, the midst, and she was of a strongly Republican background. Indeed, my grandmother, her mother, was left with a clutch of six children when her husband was brought home to her, mortally wounded on the door of a pub at a local skirmish in Sligo. And he died three or four days later. And she was left, and this was the era of no great big social welfare or anything like that. She was left with a clutch of children to bring up and to educate, and they had 12 acres of land, of, uh, not great land, at the foot of Ben Bourbon. Now, she was very lucky. She had a cousin who was very central in um, the nuns' community, the Earthside in Sligo, and she took each one of the girls one by one and educated them, you know, brought them into school, uh, clothed them, fed them, made them borders, and they got powerful education, so much so that three of them got scholarships directly to university out of the Erskine in Sligo. So I went back there sometime more to look at the records, and I was amazed. They have a wonderful uh, woman there who's looking after all of that, an elderly nun, but she had them beautifully collated and ready for me. And I thought to myself, a young girl from a background like that, as my mother was, it was a great feat to get to college and to do her BA and all of that. But along the way, anyway, she met my father, Patrick Joseph Lennon, from Kilfenora in County Clare. And when they met, their different, their very political backgrounds went out the window because love came in. And once it did, that was that. They fell for one another very heavily and uh, they decided that they would get married. And going back to my grandmother, she was so Republican, instead of minding her business when she was left with all those children and knowing that she should be good and careful, she made her house a safe house. I heard one of the earlier speakers talk about the term a safe house. When she made a safe house of her little farmhouse and everyone who was on the run or was in trouble or whatever was welcome there. I've often thought of her spirit. Instead of, as I say, saying to herself, how am I going to manage now with all of these children? I've no money and I'm to manage and do. She went out and she got busy. And in fact, her, one of her sons, Roger, Roger Scanlon, he was the boy soldier on the mountain in the skirmish when um, there were six of them killed, including Michael McDowell's uncle, Owen, uh, Owen McNeil's son, Brian, Brian McNeil. Uh, he was the one who alerted them on the mountain that they were coming for them. The bodies were brought down, and my mother, my grandmother, had a small dairy in her house, and the bodies were laid out there, the six bodies, of, as they are called now, Sligo's Noble Six. So that was the background of my mother and, as I say, the background of my father. My father fought in the Free State <coughs> Army. He fought in, and I went to see his <coughs> army number. He fought in Athenry when he was a student. And then after that, he fought in many other skirmishes of that war. We were always conscious growing up, my two brothers and my sister, we were always conscious of our mixed political background. But when my father first went, Sean Lamas, who was the minister in the Fianna Fáil government, had met my father as a young civil servant. <coughs> and he liked the cut of his gym, you know, he thought, well, he's a good guy. And he sent him to Athlone to set up an enterprise called General Textiles Limited. 
It was an embryonic cotton factory. There were about five or six of them set up around Ireland at the time to give employment. State invested, of course, um, but it was the time for that. And he sent him to Athlone, and he came home and said to my mother one day, pack your traps, Annie, we're going to Athlone. Now, she was glad, it was halfway to Sligo, he was halfway to Clare, I suppose, but anyway, they came to Athlone with three children, and I was, my mother was pregnant with me. So I'm the only Athlone person out of that clutch of people. But, um, when the local elections came in 1943 in Athlone Town, my father went as a Red Pairs Association candidate. It was another title for Fine Gael, so he was still with his roots, and he went on that occasion as a Red Pairs Association. But later on, and he headed the poll. Now later on, he um, later on he. Uh, I suppose Sean the Mask got at him and sort of said, hey, I just sent you to Athlone to be running for Fine Gael, but he, he went for Fine Fáil, and in time he became Mr. Fine Fáil Athlone. And in 65 he went for the Dáil and got in, and had for five short years he died in 1970. So you'll say, why am I telling you all this? Well, it's because I feel it will explain my later thoughts. So we fast forward now to Sunday, the 23rd, the 22nd of August, 2010, in Bailamna in County Cork, when Brian Lennon, who was the then Minister for Finance, spoke at the annual commemoration of the life and legacy of Michael Collins. Brian, Co Brian Lennon was greatly honoured to have received an inverted commas in his own words, this quite unexpected offer from the Collins family and the commemoration committee, and he expressed so publicly on that occasion. I have spoken to Dermot Collins since then, who initiated the invitation to Brian, and he was quite emphatic that he and his committee were unanimous in wanting Brian Lennon to have this privilege. And of course the privilege it was, they never had had anybody from the enemy, in inverted commas, but Brian was very special, and I suppose there was a man that in him. Um, I went to Bailey Law on that occasion with two friends from Athlone, one of whom is here with me today, and I would always be glad that I did so, as I have the eternal memory of Brian standing clear and tall and confident, but humble, as he spoke at that hallowed spot. Now I'm going to quote directly now from his speech in Bainham Law because it has a bearing on what I'm going to say later. So if you'll excuse me, because the next words are not my words, they're his words, I want to have them absolutely accurate. The differences between Fianna Fáil, he said, and Fine Gael today are no longer defined by the civil war, nor have they been for many years. It would be absurd if they were. This period of our history is gradually moving out of living memory. We ask and expect those in Northern Ireland to live and work together despite the carnage and grief of a much more recent and much more protracted conflict. Nevertheless, the key competition between Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael remains as I am, that was he, as he was very aware every time he stood up at the door, but the power of symbolism cannot be denied, or the more so as we move towards the centenaries of the Easter Rising and all that follows, and Dr. O'Callaghan was talking about that this morning. If today's commemoration, Brian said, can be seen as a further public act of historical reconciliation at one of Irish history's sacred places, then I will be proud to have played my part. Now, they were his words then on that beautiful sunny Sunday afternoon in Bailey Blanc. He went on to say in his talk that he had taken a particular interest in Michael Collins' work as Minister for Finance, which he was, between 1919 and 1922. And he said in a meeting room in the Department of Finance, where I, that's he, had spent many hours over the last two years, and pictures of all previous ministers. They are in sequence, 
Owen Mark Beale's portrait is the first because he was actually the first to hold that office in the first of all, though he served for less than 10 weeks. The picture of Collins, Brian said, is placed second and regularly catches my eye. He is the youngest and I dare say the best looking of them all. And he was, you know, the hair of the boy fell off. But Brian would have given him a run for it, I would think. Brian went on to say there is no substantive connection between the economic and financial position we come from today and the totally different challenges faced by Collins and his contemporaries. But as I look at those pictures of my predecessors on the wall in my meeting room in the Department of Finance, I recognise that many of them, from Collins through to Ray McSharry, had in their time to deal with immense, if different, difficulties. I, have comfort I am comforted by what their stories tell me about the essential resilience of our country, of our political and administrative system, and above all, of the Irish people. That is why I am convinced, he said, that we have the ability, that we have the ability to work through and to overcome our present difficulties. Great though the scale of the challenges may be, and devastating though the effects of the crisis have been on the lives of so many of our citizens. Brian's closing lines on that memorable day in Bailham Law were, the spirit of Collins is the spirit of our nation, and it must continue to inspire all of us in public life, irrespective of party or tradition. Well, here we are now in 2013, and, I, and here I am too, somebody who was in successive general elections, <coughs> elected on behalf of the Fianna Fáil party, and proudly representing my constituency of Longford, Westmeath. And yet, and yet, and yet, surely it is not too fanciful for me to put forward today as the theme, as my theme for this summer school, that it is time that Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael would bridge the political divide between them and give serious thought to coming together in a political coalition come the next general election. I know quite well that there are plenty who would dismiss my, reflective, my reflections here today as summer school speak um, or even the wild rantings of somebody who has left the political system. No, 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 there are no wild rantings. It is very easy to dismiss my thoughts in that cavalier fashion. We as a people have long forgotten that the bone of contention between us as parties since the Civil War is the treaty signed in London in those far off <coughs> days. I put the thought out there, conscious that I can do so, coming as I do, from a, a, his, a lifetime of observing the tribal political uh, reflected in the tribal political theatre that is Dorel. Coming, coming as I am from someone who has reflected in historical terms long and hard on the thoughts I'm putting forward today, and coming as I am from a mixed political background. We are in the end the product of our backgrounds. And though growing up we knew all that about my mother and my father, it didn't somehow come in on us. We didn't, it didn't kind of weigh upon us. But yet, of course, it had a bearing. I was inspired to do so by the generous thoughts and reflections in the speech Brian Lennon made in Bailham Law. It is, to my mind, one of the most generous non-tribal speeches ever made by anyone in either Fine Fáil, Fine Gael, or Labour. But I am most of all inspired by what has been able to be done in Northern Ireland of the differences which have been overcome and accommodated. Is it not time to bury the total poles and fly the common flag of Michael Collins and Eamon de Valera? I quote finally from the last sentence of Brian Lennon's speech, 
But even if we can never know how the relationship between Collins and Devonera might have been evolved, surely now we have the maturity to see that in their very different styles, both made huge contributions to the creation and development of our state. Neither was without flaws, but each had great strengths. Each was at different periods prepared to operate with the constraints of the reality facing them without losing sight of the greater vision of a free, prosperous, a distinctive, and dare I say here in Clower, sometime United Ireland. It's at that time now in this year of 2013 to know the similarities and to forego the differences. It's at that time for us to think the unthinkable, to allow our minds to range over the possibilities which could emerge from the voices of the electorate in two to three years' time. It is enough that the mind is engaged, and that is all I ask for, to engage the mind on this possibility and to reflect on the courage and vision of those who have gone before us. Now, I don't usually, very rarely do I um, actually speak from a script. I like to talk naturally. But I did feel that this was an important occasion. I did feel that the theme and the principle of what I had to say was very important. So that's why I actually sat down with Brian's script there and my own blank pages. And I thought and wrote and thought and wrote. And I hope you, I am sure you will accept it in the way in which I have prepared it and in which I have to say it. And as a little funny interlude to it all, I forgot to say that when I started to make my way in politics, um, the local organisation in Athlone of Fianna Fáil, oh, there was already a guy going forward to and then I was going, you know the way it is, and they wanted to have one up on me. I used to say at meetings, and your father wasn't Fianna Fáil either. And of course we all knew that, that was the way we were brought up, we weren't, it wasn't taken from us. But I was to say, and what about my mother? Is she not important? Is she not, is her background not important? And they would kind of say, oh yeah, yeah, but you see to them, then as now, women in politics, no, no, they're not top dogs, they're down the line a bit. And uh, so that used to be the taunt I would get. Uh, oh, you don't. How about we 